Hello and welcome to the interview. Can you be a mem member of a Danish criminal gang, a radical Islamist and a CIA agent in less than 10 years? Well, the answer is yes. And the answer is on our set uh, today because this is the incredible journey of our guests, Morten uh, Storm. Welcome to the France 24 interview. Thank you. Uh, your incredible story is recounted in, in a memoir, Agent Storm, My Life Inside Al-Qaeda and the C CIA. It's written with journalists Paul Cruikshank and Tim Lister, and it is now published in uh, French. Uh, the publisher is Les Editions du uh, Cherche uh, Midi. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a very unusual uh, trajectory uh, you've had. You were a member of the so-called Bandido uh, gang in a small town of Corsor, uh, where you come from, with a lot of uh, violence, drug, jail time. Yeah. Uh, and then suddenly you have an epiphany. Uh, you find uh, your way in Islam. You uh, begin to study Islam. You go to Yemen for the first time in 1997. Mm. Then you move to, to London, where you mingle with a lot of uh, radical uh, Islamists. And uh, this begs the question, especially in the light of uh, recent terrorist attacks where people who were criminal hmm. also became terrorists, how do you go from one to the other? Yes, it, that's a very good question. And that's something I've been saying for about a year now. You know, and uh, there are uh, tendencies between young uh, you know, Muslims who are gang, me uh, gang members and now falling into this fundamentalistic interpretation of Islam. We see a lot of them, they're all rappers, they have these tendencies from gang, from gang societies moving into practicing fundamentalistic interpretation of Islam. In your uh, journey, I mean, you were someone who was mingling with uh, people who uh, then went on to perpetrate attacks. After the 9-11 attacks, you celebrated mm. uh, them. You called uh, your son Osama yeah. for Osama mm. uh, bin Laden, and you were ready uh, to go uh, to jihad in, in Somalia at the time. However, uh, it didn't happen, and then suddenly, and it's not really clear why you decide that this is not the right way. Can you explain us? What yes, happened? Uh, in my personally case, uh, I I discovered that there were contradictions in the Quran. And in the Quran, Allah, he said that if you find any contradiction, it will not be from me. So by me being a fundamentalistic Muslim, and uh, I interpret Islam so literally, so it's either black or white, it's either the truth or false. And the truth was Osama bin Laden at the so, time for so, you. Yeah, false. So the truth was for me that part of Islam. Suddenly when I found something that contradicted it, it meant it was no longer the truth and I left. So it's like a card, a card house, as you say. It's very easy to, 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 uh, uh, to blow away. So in my case, when I was convinced that Islam was no longer the truth, I then decided to work for the intelligence and to fight terrorism. Right, because you get in touch yeah. with Danish intelligence, yeah. British intelligence, eventually, of course, the uh, CIA. Uh, so you go back uh, to Yemen and you become friends uh, with someone uh, who was also ascending in uh, the terrorist world, Anwar al-Awlaki, who was a U.S. Uh, citizen, actually, and who was in Yemen and was growing in the local branch of al-Qaeda. How did you become friends with him and how close were you? It started in 2006 when I went to Yemen first time as a Muslim, just about a year before I left Islam. Um, I was introduced to him by other British Muslims and Australian Muslims, and he knew, uh, he knew the background of my friends, the Yemeni friends I already met years before that. So for him, it was easy to develop this friendship with me. And when, when I then left Islam and worked as an agent and I returned to Yemen, I continued as normal. So there was no test for me. I did not have to prove anything. So he didn't think that, of course, you were working for Western intelligence because you were basically sent on missions uh, yeah. to try uh, to track him. Yeah. Uh, but you recount uh, one uh, very mm. uh, unusual uh, moment when uh, you sent him not only material, but also a wife uh, that you find a Croatian uh, convert. Uh, her Muslim name is Amina. How did that happen? It sounds like it's really science fiction. Yes, I, I understand. For, for people from outside, this is really a crazy thing. Uh, but at that time, Anwar al became 
a, a very high level target for the CIA. We just had the, the Fort Hood shootings. Now people were killed in America because of Anwar al awlaki We needed to have a way to be in touch with him. So I improvised from my own idea. I, I went to Facebook. Facebook had like groups that supported Anwar al I just typed into the whole message. I say, if you need to help the Sheikh, you know, contact me. Only one out of all the people, there was only one who contacted me. That was Amina. And it worked. It absolutely worked, yeah. So she, she went to Yemen, she married uh, him, and you were paid a quarter million uh, dollars. That's right. Uh, by uh, Western uh, intelligence, by the CIA, yeah. actually, yeah. Uh, because uh, you were able to send her. Uh, however, uh, it didn't work out because I imagine the idea was that you would send her, locate him, and that's that they right. would kill him. Yes, that's correct. It, it didn't. It didn't. It was not successful in the beginning. Uh, the first time, the, uh, Anwar Aluki told her, "Leave all your stuff in Sana, and then come down to me." So, it was a huge failure for us. And uh, you know, we wanted because you had tracking devices in her building. Absolutely, and we, we we were certain that we could get him this time. Uh, but it took months later, about a year later, before we we finally got him. So uh, this is where uh, you had your break with the Western Intelligence Services. There was a five million dollar mm. uh, price tag on his head, and you believe that you helped yeah. locate him. He was killed yeah. uh, by a U.S. drone strike, mm. uh, but the Western Intelligence agencies did not agree. Obviously, they didn't give you the money, and then you had a very nasty. We, we, uh, we, in the beginning, yes, the, the mission were all point, even the Danish, you know, uh, the head of the Danish intelligence, those are working with say, well, this is your mission. But they didn't understand why the Americans wouldn't recognize it. However, um, yes, it is true that I fell out with the Americans at that time, but it is also true that I forgave them, forgave them about the money. I wanted to, and I continued my work uh, for another eight months to track down the leadership of Al Qaeda in Yemen. So, um, so, but it was a very unfortunate situation for all of us. And the Danish government have assisted the Americans illegally to assassinate people. I did not know that that was one of the reasons why I could never get credited from 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 this. Mission. So you believe that Anwar al Awlaki mm. was killed thanks to your efforts, or yes, you're convinced by this? Yes, we are, I'm absolutely convinced. I mean, we have we have concrete proof of that. So yeah. And uh, you, as you said, you've continued mm. to help track uh, Al Qaeda and Yemen uh, leaders. However, uh, the organization is still very lethal and yeah. it's still very dangerous. Do you believe uh, that because you stopped working? Uh, some leads were, were lost and some time was lost in fighting the organization. You, you know, in, two, in May 2012, I gave the CIA the golden opportunity to kill and track down and kill uh, Nasser Waheshi and Ibrahim Asiri, the bump maker of Al Qaeda, the, the most the two major, top leaders, the of two top leaders of Al Qaeda. And you know what? They, they declined it. The CIA declined it. Why is that? It, it See, doesn't that, sound credible. Uh, that why would doesn't they? sound exactly. It doesn't sound credible. And that was why I had to stop. And that's why I went public, because on my last mission to Yemen, I was tipped off by a, a guy who was working for the CIA, who told me because when I arrived to Yemen. My, my driver was not there. He ran off to China. I went to China and he warned me over there and say, the CIA is going to kill you on your last trip here. And so for me, uh, it was a huge warning. But I still gave the benefit of the doubts to the CIA. So I told the Danish government, you know what we can do? We can send the equipment down to these terrorists as we used to do with Anwar, as we have done with people in Somalia. Uh, but the CIA declined it. And I even have recording for that, proving my statements in, Dan in Danish. Why, why did they decline? Why, why do you think they Even the Danish government don't know. We, none of us know why. Do you uh, believe uh, that now, obviously in France there's a lot of talk about Yemen because uh, some of the perpetrators of the Paris uh, attacks, uh, Kwashi brothers, mm -hmm. apparently uh, went uh, to Yemen uh, several years ago. Uh, does it show that Yemen is indeed uh, not only a local branch, but a branch uh, with ramifications in Somalia, but also in the Western world. Yes, you, you're right. This is, Yemen has got this, uh, it, it's because of religion. I mean, in the Hadith, Yemen is mentioned to be the place where the, the, the Islam will be, you know, will conquer the world from. It will start where this Muslim army will 
conquer the West. And this is why Anwar al believed that he was part of that, uh, of that prophecy. And that's why you see many Muslims uh, pil making pilgrimage to Yemen to join with Al-Qaeda or AQAP over there, because they believe that is what Prophet Muhammad say, and this is the call for them. You, today, mm. uh, you still have not presumed any ties with the Western intelligence agencies. Yeah. You are obviously under threat. Yeah. How serious is the threat against you, do you think? Well, I, I, I think it's quite serious. I had a fast uh, 2013, where they shoot my picture in, in Syria. And, you know, I have to get killed. I have people who were sentenced last year for incitement of wanting to kill me. Uh, this January, uh, another one, uh, two people have been arrested in Denmark for wanting to kill me as well. So there are quite serious threats out there. So Why aren't you getting protection from your government or other Western governments? I, the only protection I have is from the French government while I'm here. Uh, I have no protections anywhere else in the world where I go. Uh, I, I don't know, I cannot answer you that because I, don't, I cannot even communicate with them. Are you scared? I'm, I, I was in the beginning. Uh, I have to be very honest and frank about it. Once you go for so long time, it becomes a normal thing for you. Thank you very much, Martin, yeah, for, thank you for so coming much. on the France 24 set. Thank you for watching this edition of the interview. Stay tuned here for more news.